everybody, Stacy here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm at one of my customers' houses today, starting a remodel on two different bathrooms, so I wanted to film it and share it with you guys. I've got to remove the fiberglass tub and shower surround, build a new shower pan, install a new diverter and tile from the floor to the ceiling. It'll get new glass doors. We're getting a new toilet, new vanity sink, countertop, um, new light fixtures and towel hangers, and then the floor is getting tiled. But first I have to prep the job site by putting plastic on the furniture and paper on the ground to protect the floor. customer wants the sink and the sink base for a shop, so we're going to try to take it out without damaging anything. These door hinges usually have a clip here. Yeah, there we go. It'll come right off. I noticed that there's an AC vent under the base, and the pipes come up through the bottom, so that means we're going to have to cut the pipes and cap them for now so we can pull this off in one piece. Got a bucket under here to catch anything coming out of the heat trap. These braided steel lines are still good, so we'll probably reuse them. After you take the peat trap off, you have an open drain line. The sewer gases can come out of there. It really stinks, so I usually plug it up with some plastic just like that. Snippy snip, valves are off, discussion rings are off. We're ready to pull the sink base out. There's the air vent. I'm gonna put these little shark bite caps on top of the CPVC because they could always be removed when I get ready to do the valves. Okay, to take out the toilet, you shut the supply line off first, flush your toilet. Vacuum the rest of the water out of the tank and the bowl. Obviously take your filter out of the wet dry bag first. Okay, now I can disconnect the supply line. Where it connects to the tank, it should just be hand tight, so you can reach under there and just twist it. These caps should pop right off. Oh, it's got a wing nut, that's good. I don't use a tool. No. Now, the toilet should lift straight up. All right, this is kind of the gross part. That's why I got gloves on. You gotta scrape all this wax out of the flange. All right, just like with the drain lines for the sink, we're gonna jam some plastic down inside this hole. Bathrooms demoed. I open up the floor so I can work on the drain and the lines. The old drain for the tub is way over in the corner, but what I want to do is move it here to the center when we do our new shower pan. The customer also asked if I could take the diverter and move it to the other wall over here. I've got the new shower diverter installed on the other wall. Everything's all plumbed, the glue's dry and the water is back on, so now we're checking for leaks anywhere. Uh-oh. I see water dripping here. It's dripping right here on the brass fitting side. So what I'm gonna do is shut the water back off, cut this, take this off, put some more thread tape on here, crank it down, and put a coupling there. 
have the water off now, but there might be some residual water in the lines and you don't want to cut this and have it squirt out or, or seep out. So I'll open this up, let a little bit of air in and that should allow the rest of the water to drain down to the lowest point. backer board is down and as you can see I staggered the edges that way there's no weak spots. My customers wanted a nook in the center of the shower so I had to rework some of the framing here. shower pan liner comes up behind the bottom section of hardy backer so I've got to get this liner in before I finish the wall. I've got the shower pan liner done, the rest of the hardy boards in and wiped down so now I can tape the seams and then apply red guard. Red guard, you can put it on with a roller, a brush, or a trowel. I used a trowel. I sure wore gloves. The reason I used a trowel is so I could push it between all the seams. As you can tell, I'm bouncing back and forth between both bathrooms. In the first bathroom, when I took the shower surround out, the drywall um, was still attached to a sister board back here. This one doesn't have one, so when I cut this drywall, it was free floating. So what you have to do in that case, instead of just letting it float there, you cut it back to the next stud halfway and I bought a new piece of drywall to put between here, between these two studs. Mm. 